Tony Martin. Les Ellis. Hello, sick. Well, that can't be helped. You think you can pick up a slack for the week? Cheers, Martin. Appreciate it. Bills. B Why am I being sent bills? I'm the archivist, not the bloody accountant. Well, maybe. Well, maybe well, something maybe terrible something happened terrible to the accountant. To the accountant. Who, who are you? How do you get in here? Really telling me. Are you really no, telling really me you don't recognize this face? I thought it was rather fetching. I'll enjoy using it. What? What happened to the accountant? Don't you know? You Don't you know? Don't you, you were the one who did it. Surely you recall what her Surely eyeballs felt eyeballs like as you squished them with your thumbs. Would have like what her screams would have sounded like if you hadn't. Well, I'm sure you know what you did. Okay, okay, I, I, I get the idea. Thank you. You can leave now. Archivist. Oh, I'm archivist. In you. I'm, disa I'm disappointed oh, in you. I'm disappointed. You don't inquire, you. You you don't inquire about my existence. You don't you don't my look. About my existence. You don't even try you don't to behold me. I have heard such good things me. about the new archivist. But it seems we're starting, starting back at square one all over again. Square one all over again. Enough games. Enough messing around. Who are you? <laughs> so that's what that feels like. Oh, I'm the head archivist of the Magnus Institute, London. Your replacement. Or, I suppose more accurately, your fear of replacement. You know as well as anyone that you are not your understanding that you are expendable. You know as well as anyone that you are not the first head archivist of the Magnus Institute, London, and you will not be the last. You're not even worth the extinction's time to deal with you. Your replacement would be so small, so unnoticed. And it might have already happened. But you knew that already. You already knew that you were... ...replaceable. But are you really telling me that when you look in the mirror, you don't recognize this face staring back at you? Okay, okay. Shut up. You've made your point. You can leave. Now. Ooh, feisty. Ooh, feisty. You've picked feisty. a feisty archivist. <gasps> Look at you. Got bored of doormats, eh? Who are you talking to? How, how, how are you so naive? I've listened to your tapes. This is gross misconduct, as this is quite clearly the actions of one of the entities. Most likely the slaughter, given the seeming randomness of the attack, although it is possible that the hunt had been stalking this group of friends for a while, making them a suspect. I leave for coffee for ten minutes, and they let a statement be made that is clearly screaming corruption, and they just let him walk away? You know of the entities, but you refuse to acknowledge the one you serve. I don't serve an entity. <laughs> oh, foolish archivist, of foolish course archivist, you do. Well, I suppose they left that out of your contract. Well. I was going kill to kill you, kill but, you, kill but, you but oh, where's the fun in killing an ignoramus? ignoramus. <laughs> I'll be back when you naturally know what you're talking about, I suppose. No, wait! Damn it, it's gone. Every day this job gets weirder. 
entity could I be serving? I mean, my job is about collecting information on fear. That pretty firmly puts me in the eyes line of influence, but at the same time, I have very few friends, and I live in an underground flat that's one bassy song away from caving in, so... I suppose that puts me on the lonely and the buried's respective radars. This gives me a lot to think about. Statement of Robert Simmons regarding the disappearance and subsequent reappearance of Dr. Lewis Inglesby. Original statement made January 10th, 1996. Statement begins. There was no one like Lewis Inglesby. I say was, even though official records say nothing has happened to him, because I know he is dead. He has been replaced by some... some creature, a, a monster straight from the old stories of changelings and the fair folk. It started last June. We'd just gone bowling and, well, not to toot my own horn, but I think I did quite well. Anyway, afterwards we, we were walking back, me, Lewis, and our mutual friends, Joseph Lang and Max Foss. Joey and Max turned off first, and Lewis and I were walking together alone for maybe half an hour when we were approached by a homeless guy. This was unusual, because they tend to avoid my district. We're quite a poor neighbourhood, and it's no secret, so they know that there's not any good money to be made off us. Anyway, he came up and asked if we had any change. Lewis was always a bleeding heart, so he dug into his pocket and gave the guy a fiver, which he seemed pleased about. He left without even asking me for anything. I thought it was odd, but I didn't think anything of it until the next week. Lewis didn't show up for work. We work at the same insurance company, and Lewis had never missed a day of work in three years working there. But he didn't show up. He didn't answer his phone or his door when I went round to see if he was okay. He was completely MIA for a week. Then, one day, he just turned back up. Except, it wasn't him. It was the homeless guy from last week. Everyone referred to him as Lewis. He did the things Lewis did. He, he lived in Lewis's house, but it was so obviously not Lewis. I honestly don't know how anyone didn't see it, but... I guess it must have been the powers of the man. I don't know what he was, but he must have been some kind of wizard or, or shape-shifting creature. I tried to tell people the truth. I tried showing them pictures of the real Lewis, but every picture I have of him shows the homeless guy. Not Lewis. I've brought one in and handed it in with this statement, along with a drawing of what Lewis looked like. Don't bother trying to find him. I know he's dead. Statement ends. This would explain why that creature decided to stop by. They must have known they'd be making a cameo in this statement and wanted to rattle me. Ass. I don't rightfully know what to do with this statement. Obviously I sent... Oh, hey. Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. You go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll text you if uh, the one in the thing. Alright, cheers. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I sent Martin to follow up with Robert Simmons, and I'll send Alice to talk to Joseph Lang and Max Foss when she gets back from the coffee run. It should be noted that the photograph attached to the statement looks exactly the same as the drawing attached. Maybe he sent in the wrong one? Or maybe he was more influenced by the stranger than he realised. Uh, this is all rather stressful. Maybe I will get that coffee after all. Nothing new from any of the follow-ups. Complete dead ends. Further investigation would be a desperate waste of time. End recording.